the very last, but they had, just like today, they're fighting sickness, and so uh, they'll get it. Got a couple jokes for you and everybody <laughs> said, oh, I just can't wait. I know. Um, how much did Santa have to pay for his new sled? Nothing. It was on the house. <laughs> <laughs> you can groan if you want. It's okay. I understand. There was a guy who was uh, standing on his on his scale, and he sucks in his gut, you know, and his wife comes by and sees him and says, you know, that's not gonna help. And he said, well, yeah, it is. I can see the numbers when I do that. <laughs> <laughs> got, a, got a lot, we'll see how far we get. Um, last week, we, we talked about the Holy Spirit. If you didn't get to be here, I really encourage you to watch that and listen to it. And the Lord is just uh, reminding us, and I think it's the time that we're in, that we actually have the spirit of the living God on the inside of us. Amen. And there is so much he wants to do, and there's so much he wants to reveal. And he wants us to learn what pleases him. What his personality is like, what he likes. He doesn't want to control or manipulate us. He wants to walk this, this life out. And he provides this stuff that we call grace. Mm -hmm. And grace is not just, you know, favor with man. Grace is a supernatural enablement. In other words, it's doing something by the spirit that you can't do in the natural by yourself. And so... We quoted a passage out of Acts 2 where he says, you know, when you believe, you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. If you got saved, if you asked Jesus in your heart, the Holy Spirit came and lived on the inside of you. Amen? Amen. Right. And I just want to talk a little while today, and we're going to kind of go around the mulberry bush to get there, but I feel like it's important. We've got several scriptures. If you have your Bibles, I would love for you to look at them. You've got your phone with your, um, with your Bible app. That's a great thing, too. And as we go through these, most of these, you know, uh, you all know, but you may, wanna, you may want to uh, write something down as we go through. The Holy Spirit may draw something up. So we're going to go to Acts 2. Acts 2. I'm sorry, I said Acts. Hebrews 2. We're going to go to Acts in a second. Sorry, Hebrews 2. A little bit further over. And I looked at this in multiple translations. I'm going to read it out of the New Living. Normally I use the New King James. But it says, So we must listen very carefully to the truth we have heard, or we may drift away from it. The message God delivered to the angels has always proved true. And the people were punished for every violation of the law and every act of dis disobedience. Talking about the Old Testament in particular. What makes us think that we can escape if we are indifferent to this great salvation that was announced by the Lord Jesus himself? Hello? We heard a gospel and, and we even received one. But God expects us to go further than just getting, you know, the proverbial fire insurance. Mm -hmm. And then he says, it was passed on to us by those who heard him speak. In other words, the, the apostles. And God verified the message by signs and wonders and various miracles and by giving gifts of the Holy Spirit Amen. whenever he chose to do so. And the point I want you to see is that that. The miraculous always surrounded the gospel. In the book of Acts, you see that over and over. And, and though I've read commentaries, you know, Pastor Don and Richard, some of the others have, who, who have this goofy explanation, I probably should, I should be nicer than that, that, you know, now that we have the Bible, we don't need any of those things. 
And yet Jesus said something completely different. So I just want to back up just a little bit so that we're all on the same page. In John 20, 22, after Jesus was risen from the dead and he's talking to his disciples, who are, are the apostles, it says, and when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. It says that he breathed on them. And they received the Holy Spirit inside. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now, a little bit later, over in Acts, we, we see him spending 40 days with the, uh, the disciples. Wouldn't that be the coolest thing? To have him explain and teach the kingdom? That would be awesome. <laughs> yeah. And you know what? His spirit lives in you. That's right. He still wants to do that today. And being assembled together with them, this is verse 4, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard from me. Now they've already received the Holy Spirit. For John truly baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? They thought he was going to set up a whole new government. There were going to be some head ducks in it. And they were excited about that. Verse 7. And he said to them, it's not for you to know times or seasons, which the Father has put in his own authority. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Now, he's saying... The Spirit's in you, but you need to be filled. You need, it says, that filling, when he comes upon you, and those you, you see those phrases, they're interacted. He came upon them, so, and being filled, they're, they're inter, and being baptized in the Holy Spirit. The point is, if, if we're truly to be his witnesses, his disciples, we have to be filled. I mean, we should be filled. Put it that way. And I think about, we have many brethren in, in denominations that don't believe that. And you know what? They do a really good job seeing people get saved. And I find myself just thinking, just wonder what they might be able to do. Now, In Acts 2, when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire. And one sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues. As the Spirit gave them utterance. Now, I want you to go to Mark 1 real quick. So these disciples... These apostles did what Jesus said. They went, they went to Jerusalem and they prayed until they received the infilling of the Holy Spirit. But in Mark 1, 9, how many of you believe that Jesus had the Holy Spirit in him? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. yeah. Hello? I mean, that may sound like the dumbest question you ever heard, but the Bible says that he was born through the Holy Spirit from the very conception but it's interesting, for 30 years he walks and serves his, his family and others. And then in, in Mark 1, 9 it says, And he came to pass in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And immediately coming up from the water, he saw the heavens parting and the Spirit descending upon him like a dove. Then a voice came from heaven, You are my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Now, I don't want to get into a theological deal here, but the reality is that Jesus didn't start until the Holy Spirit came upon him. That's right. Amen? Amen. Amen. Okay. And, and in, in just theological ways, we have examples in Acts uh, where people received salvation. The Bible says they were baptized in water. Miracles happened. But they had not been filled. They had not received. And they sit down, the apostles, and they came down and laid hands on them. 
And they did. Amen? Amen. Okay. I know I'm kind of preaching to the choir on that, but uh, last week we looked at this passage. Uh, Isaiah 11, Isaiah 11, verse 1, 2. There shall come forth a rod from the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots, speaking of Jesus. The spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and the spirit of might, the spirit of knowledge and the spirit of the fear of the Lord. Now, those rested on Jesus. And the same spirit is in you. And it's interesting, we looked at some different things and we said, you have access because the Holy Spirit resides in you to these things. One of the things it says here was mind and also wisdom and understanding. Now, I want to look at, we're going to go to, to 1 Corinthians 12, but those things are available from the Holy Spirit. Right? However, part of it is our cooperation, but part of it is his decision to manifest. Amen? Amen. Because I don't know about you if you've ever had a, you wanted to have a word of knowledge. Now, sometimes word of knowledge is used, has been, to expose a sin. And, I, you know, I've had that happen in my life. I mean, that's not the priority, but help us, Jesus. <laughs> I just lost my train of thought. It went right by. But sometimes we've got, a, you know, we've got somebody in front of us that just really kind of rubs us the wrong way, and we'd say, like, Lord, give me something. I just want, you know, something I'll just thump them with it. I've had that happen on more than one occasion, probably more than I want to admit. But the kicker is, he never gave me one. Okay, 1 Corinthians 12. Yeah, verse 1 is where we're going to start at. And I just want to give you... Guys, we have looked at Scripture, and in particular, we charismatics about gifts. And we've got this thing all figured out. We've Americanized it, and we and we read we read in the Bible things, and we want we, we we assume we don't really intend to, but we assume it's like this is the way it is in the United States, and in this day, and we lose sight of who was Paul talking to, what was going on. Hello. In fact, even as we look at the gifts, boy, we, we, I, I've known people, and they, they can slice and dice them. They can cut them up. And this, this is the gift, and this, this, this. And there is so much overlap. And it's not about knowing everything. It's being aware of and learning in that. But the Holy Spirit is, he is all of that power and all of that. And sometimes it, this gift may be here and then another one comes and it's just not as slick and, and organized as we like to make it. Is that making sense? Yes. He's a lot bigger than just those nine gifts. I'm sorry. That's right. So in Corinth, Corinth was, was a really big city about uh, 150 BC before Jesus. It got pretty well torn down. And then uh, Julius Caesar, you remember him from, from your history books? He rebuilt that thing. And it's in, a, it's in an interesting place. It's a, an isthmus. It's a narrow part between two seas. And so they would, it had a port on this side, a port on this side. And because it was so narrow, they would have these littler boats that they made where they could drag them across. And they would put goods in it because it was quicker than taking it all the way around. So it was incredibly prosperous. And these people were, it's kind of interesting that these guys were, were well-to-do people. They were kind of normal folks who, with all this commerce, had made, had made quite a bit of money on their own. They had kind of an independent spirit. Things like democracy came out of that environment. And, and Paul's writing to this, this church 
And they were a mess. Hello? They had problems. You know, we don't have church problems anymore, do we? They had, they had division. Ever done any churches with division? And to the point where they wanted to follow this pastor, that pastor, this teacher, that, that was the anointed one. Well, I'm going after the prophet. Well, I'm going after the apostle. I'm going after the pastor. Whatever it is, they, they had all of this. And in the midst of it, they kind of lost the whole purpose and lost Jesus in the midst. Then they were suing one another. Now, we don't, we don't sue today, do we? We don't sue. <laughs> I mean, just go on. If we don't win, you don't pay. You know, it... But they were suing other brothers. Mm -hmm. Then there was immorality. Now there's no immorality in the church in the United States. No. <laughs> I can't tell you how much I've been bombarded for, with passive stuff that goes on. Mm -hmm. But these guys also moved in the gifts of the Spirit. In, in supernatural ways. And they were a mess. I mean, we take communion with little, little cups. <laughs> Even if it was wine, you couldn't get drunk on that unless you took all of them or something. But, but they were getting drunk. <laughs> they would get together and have fellowship and they would, they would take communion and they would get loaded. And it wasn't of the Spirit. Now, Paul wrote four letters to, to the Corinthians. We have two of them. Some say that the other two were lost. Some say they're found in the second Corinthians. And we can have a discussion about that. And, and when they came together, even though there was supernatural gifts in operation, it was chaotic. Guys, do you understand? They, they had no concept of what we do right here. It wasn't neat and organized and whatever. People popping up, I, you know, God said, do, do, you know, all that stuff. And he, he had letters that came to him asking questions. And some, some of the letters that, that, he, that we have recorded were in response to some of those questions. Now, the other thing that was really special about Corinth is they had this huge temple. They had multiple temples, but they had this huge one to Aphrodite, who was in the Roman culture, Venus. <coughs> And it was a very interesting temple. It had 2,000 prostitutes there. The sailors who came to town loved to go to the temple. And they had the belief, if you remember any of your history, whether it be Greek, more likely Roman, they had different gods. They had a god for this, a god for war, a god, you know, all that stuff. And when Paul's writing to them, he is saying, you know, basically, you, you have great anointing and you move in some stuff, but you have really lousy theology. So I want to look at this Corinthians just a little differently than what we are. We normally do, probably. I also want to challenge, because I'm going to say some things that you may say, I don't know about that. And that's good. I love it when Richard says, I want to make you think. And I want to make you more than think. I want you to search. Because we have so much stuff that we do and we think. This is the way it is. Sure. And sometimes we even say it has to be within these two lines. And it's, it's broader than that. Sure. And some things we do because it's just, that's what we do. Not necessarily by the Spirit. So everybody there? 1 Corinthians 12, verse 1. We've been talking about gifts. This is the time of year for giving. And this is probably one of the oddest Christmas messages you've ever heard. But Lord put this on my heart. We're going that way. Now concerning spiritual gifts. Stop. <laughs> that word gifts is not there. That's not in the Greek. What it says is now concerning spiritual things. Spirituals. Because they were a very spiritual people, right? He said, brethren, I don't want you to be ignorant. They may have been operating them, but they didn't understand what was going on. You know that you were Gentiles carried away to these dumb idols. I like that, dumb. 
I don't know if that necessarily means they didn't hear or they were just stupid. I don't know. But anyway, <laughs> however, you were, however you were led, therefore I make known to you that no one speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus accursed, and no one can say that, the, that Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now, we can read that and say, well, if you say, you know, uh, Jesus is Lord, then you have the Holy Spirit at birth. It's really not saying it's what it's saying is this. They believed like healing, there might be a, a God of healing. A, a God of um, of prophecy. A God of they, they they thought all these gifts were connected or led by a particular God. And what he's saying is, no. No one, if, if, if you see somebody operate some, in something by an idol and they're, and they're saying, uh, they're not saying that Jesus is Lord, then you, you need to stay away from that. But, but he goes on to say this, verses 12, 4 through 8. There are no, uh, excuse me, there are diversities of gifts. There's different kinds of gifts. But look at that. But the same spirit. There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of activities, but it is the same God who works all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. 